Welcome back to the Atlanta Falcons franchise, everyone. I'm your host, Husker Eurocat, and we're preparing for a battle with the Philadelphia Eagles on a Monday night primetime clash. Philly is coming off a huge win over Indy in which the defense created four turnovers and the offense was able to capitalize on all of them. So one of the keys for Atlanta is playing a game like last week against the Raiders, not committing any turnovers. Then of course, they need to be mindful of Jalen Hurts running the Eagle offense. Last week he was the passing yardage leader in the NFL and the Falcons need to prepare for that as well as his ability to extend the play with his legs. Atlanta's Matt Corral showed extreme poise in the pocket last week, but will that extend to tonight's meeting with the Eagles? We'll find out as the Falcons take on the Eagles here on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Jerry and Ely is back deep for the Falcons, and Matt Gay gets us underway here in Atlanta. The ball is fielded at the two, and Ely comes up the right side numbers, and he is stopped just past the 23-yard line. Now, Corral goes back, fires, and completes this one. Long range to Geronimo Allison. Now out of the eye from the 43, up the middle goes Cook, and he is stopped at the 47. You see the numbers on him from last week. 14 carries, 51 yards. Respectable, but not great. Still wanting to see him come alive as the primary back for the Falcons. Now from the 45, the Eagles. And there he goes to the 30-yard line of the Eagles. That is exactly what the Falcons are hoping for, even though he is listed more as a receiving back. There goes Bryce Love, taking it down to the 25. And Fletcher Cox is injured um, on the sideline. The 10-year superstar veteran seems to be okay. Out of the eye formation. The give is to the first man through, and that's Ben Mason for a first down to the 18-yard line. Cook the single back, and he gets the ball, takes it up the middle, inside the 10 to the 9. So that makes it third and one. Corral throws in the middle, touchdown. Oh no, Jerry and Ely drop the ball and it's now fourth and one. Cade York is going to try a field goal from 25 out and it is good. The Falcons take the early lead in the football game. Now the Eagles finally get a chance. Hurts gives it to Sanders and he is taken down in the backfield. Rashawn Evans in on the stop. Now pass. Hurts completes it to Devontae Smith at the 29. That brings up third and six. So out of the shotgun. Hurts throws complete. Dallas Goddard to the 38. Now second and eight. Hurts throws short to Sanders and he turns and bulls his way for a first down out to midfield. Now under center, Hertz gives it to Sanders up the middle and fights his way to the 42. After a false start penalty, out of the shotgun, Hertz back to pass, can't find anybody, takes off and here is where he's dangerous all the way inside the 30-yard line. First down, Eagles. A 19-yard carry. Jalen Hurts keeping the play alive. Now third and six, and Hurts can't complete it downfield. 
So Matt Gay comes on for a 41-yard field goal, and it's up and good, tying this ball game at three apiece. Now Corral out of the shotgun. Passes the ball. Ellison catches it out at the 34 for a nine-yard pickup. Now third and one. A fake handoff. Locates a man downfield. Kyle Pitts with the reception at the 34-yard line of the Eagles. Corral sitting in the pocket. Breaks it and throws complete to Russell Gage for an eight-yard pickup. Corral out of the shotgun. Passes the ball complete to Allison. First down at the 22-yard line. Second and seven. Gives the ball to Cook, and he takes it to the 13. A nine-yard pickup. Third and one. It's incomplete. Across the middle, and Kyle Pitts couldn't hang on. So a 30-yard field goal is up and good. The Falcons take the lead six to three. Now from the 23, Hurts out of the shotgun. Can't find anybody open. Takes off and is taken down. Justin Matabike registers a one-yard sack. That brings up third and 11. Fake handoff. And he Hurts can't find anybody open and is dumped at the 20-yard line. Fourth and 13, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Punt is on its way, and did you see that move by Ely? That's one of the reasons why they picked him up as an undrafted free agent, because he has some serious moves when it comes to the return game. Cook follows the right-hand numbers and gets the first down out at the 49-yard line. Now six rushes for 49 yards. Definitely on track to outdo last week's performance. Bryce Young takes it out to the 41. Now third and two. The pass short to Allison for the first down to the 32. Now second and eight. And the handoff goes to Cook. He takes it inside the 26. Now third and three. Corral back to pass, barely gets the ball away and oh my goodness, DeMarco Jackson makes a play and tackles Ely in the backfield. So from 47 yards out, York is good. Score now is 9-3 in favor of the Falcons. Sanders takes it right, and he is stopped by Aluakun, the first man to hit him. And then Evans cleans up the play for what ended up being a two-yard loss on the play. That pass complete, but Kendall Sheffield makes the tackle well short of the yardage to gain, so the Eagles have to punt the ball. Cook, nine carries for 53 yards out of the shotgun. He's not going to get an opportunity this time. A pass is complete over the middle for a first down to Christian Kirk to the 44 yard line. Cook on the carry, takes it out to the 48 for a four yard pickup. Now third and five. Alone in the backfield is Corral, throws it over the middle. First down, Kyle Pitts at the 43. Out of the shotgun again. Another completion to Pitts, and this one is not a first down. 
An eight yard pickup, third and two. Back to pass, over the middle, complete. Allison, first down to the 22. The Falcons are on the move here on third and seven. Corral is back to pass, throws, and nobody is home. So fourth and seven, out comes York and makes good a 36 yard effort. And the score is now 12 to three with less than two minutes left in the second quarter. After a three and out by the Eagles, Corral can't find anybody open, takes off and looking, looking, gets the first down and out of bounds at the 44. A minute 15 left. Corral throws downfield and it's completed. Out of bounds at the 37 is Geronimo Allison. Now just outside of field goal range. Out of the shotgun. Corral back to pass. Completes it to Gage at the 24. Third and eight now. Another throw upcoming, and it's into the end zone all alone. Touchdown, Quez Watkins. His first receiving touchdown of the season, and this one is going to be reviewed by the booth. He was just a little bit in the back of the end zone. Did he get his feet down? Yes, he did. And that should be a touchdown. It is caps off an eight play drive right at the end of the first half. And that gives the Falcons the lead 19 to three. Now with a halftime report, let's go to Eurocat baby. Welcome to the Toyota halftime report. We'll continue coverage of your game in a moment. At least in the NFC South, things have pretty much gone the same as last week's games. Tampa Bay got manhandled by the Cowboys 38-6. Dallas continued rolling over, under, and through the Bucks with a total of 518 yards. In Charlotte, Pittsburgh jumped out to a 10-point halftime lead. And although the Panthers closed the gap a little, the Steelers finish the game with the lead and a move into a three-way tie in the NFC North behind the Ravens. The Saints remained undefeated with a strong fourth quarter performance ending the game 32-21. Something that hasn't been mentioned yet is that the Eagles have signed veteran quarterback Jameis Winston because they just weren't happy with the performance of Gardner Minshew. One would think that he wouldn't be ready to play in this game since he has to learn the Philly system a little better. This should be interesting if Hurt gets injured. What's even more surprising is that Winston has been signed a deal worth only $10,000. I guess he really wanted to be signed to take a lowball offer like that. With the Eagles offense sputtering at best, could we see him play here in the second half? Stay tuned to find out because we'll be right back. Welcome back to Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta in a complete shocker. The Falcons have dominated the first half of play. The Atlanta defense has held Philly to less than 70 yards of offense and only three points on the board. Can they continue this control or will the Eagles find a way to make a comeback? Let's find out as we take you back to the action. After an Eagle three and out, it's now the Falcons ball at the 35. Cook takes it up the middle for a seven yard pickup. It's now third and three. Corral throws complete to Allison and that was some kind of hit. Davian Taylor with the hit and Allison holds on and Taco Charlton goes to the locker room. 
with an injury. Another corral completion to Allison, and he has a first down out of bounds at the 27 of the Eagles. Corral back to pass, throws, and cannot connect. That brings out Cade York for a 42-yard field goal, and it's up and good. The Falcons with lots of field goals in this contest, but they're ahead 22-3. Hertz gives it off up the middle to Sanders, and he's to the 31 for a six-yard pickup. Now on third and one, the pass is complete for a first down to Jack Stoll. Now Sanders takes it left, and he is stopped in the backfield. Anthony Walker takes him down for a two-yard loss on the play. Out of the shotgun, the pass complete. Rookie Jamison Williams takes it out of bounds, but after a false start penalty, it's third and 11. Hertz throws deep. And it's complete to Williams at the 45 of the Falcons. That gives the Eagles a first down. And they are almost in scoring position. Sanders takes it inside the 40 on that carry, third and four. Here comes Matabike. Down goes Hertz at the 46 yard line and it brings up fourth and 12. The Eagles have to punt again. So from the 13 yard line, Corral throws out of the backfield to Cook and he gets an eight yard pickup. From the 21 up the middle goes Love and he has a first down. Out to the 24. Corral throws it complete. Allison with another catch out of bounds for a first down. His 10th catch of the night for 119 yards. Corral out of the backfield. Hits Christian Kirk for a six yard gain. Out of the eye formation. Play action pass. The throw complete downfield. And Russell Gage has the first down, his fourth. And he is now over 50 yards on the night. Corral back again and hits Christian Kirk down at the 13 yard line for number 13 as the Falcons are on their way to another score. From the 11 yard line, Love powers his way inside the five to the three, and that is a first and goal situation. That brings us to the end of the third quarter, and they did not give Love the first down. So third and one, Cook picks it up with no problem from the one yard line. Out of the I formation, the give is to Love and he is in there for the score. Touchdown Falcons. This is just turning into a route. And I'm not sure what the deal is with the Eagles because last week they had such a wonderful game. And off is Jalen Hurts. He fumbled the football. Recovered by Jonathan Abrams and out of bounds at the 31. So the Falcons in scoring position yet again. And by the way, that was Jaquan Brisker who caused that fumble. The young man out of Penn State is really making a name for himself in the early going of this season and Christian Kirk is being taken to the locker room. That can't be good news. Now second and two. 
Corral is going back and he is taken down by former Falcon Grady Jarrett. So now third and 16. The carry by Cook is a short one to the 37 yard line and a punt by Stonehouse and that is inside the five. So the Eagles have a long way to go. Out of the shotgun, the pass complete to Sanders and he has the first down out to the 16. And you're probably gonna see a lot of Jalen Hurts out of the shotgun and here he slides down at the 24 which brings up a third and four. Back to pass, throws over the middle, complete. Goddard with the first down out to the 39. Now on second and 10. Hertz completes this one to Sanders and he is promptly stopped by Mike Hughes. Third and five. Across the middle, first down over the 50 yard line to Kenneth Gainwell. Now Hertz back to pass again and this is complete at the 33 yard line to rookie wideout Johnny Johnson the third. And this one is complete as well. A nine yard pass to Dallas Goddard. Hurts on the run, can't find anybody and he is taken down in the backfield. Mike Hughes, another big stop. So that brings up third and 10. The pass long and it's complete, no, it's dropped. Sheffield got a hand in there and Williams couldn't hang on. So fourth and 10 from the 32. Hertz back to pass, completes it to Goddard and he has the first down. The Falcons with three down linemen. Hertz can't find anybody open, takes off and slides down at the 13 yard line. So third and one. He hand off to Gainwell and D is down to the seven. First down Eagles and now on second and goal. The pass completed on the sideline. Jalen Rigger out of bounds at the one. Third and goal, Sanders gets hit at the five and taken down by Evans at the two. And that will bring on the field goal unit. Matt Gay from uh, 19 out and it's good, but I would think they would be more interested in touchdowns at this point. I guess they're conceding the win and after a Falcon three and out, the Eagles have it again inside the two minute warning. At the 19 yard line, third and seven. Hertz launches it and it bounces around, intercepted. Jaquan Brisker at the 43 yard line. Another big play by the rookie out of Penn State. He is really shining in the early going of this season. And if Atlanta plays this right, they could end the ball game right here. The only thing, Philadelphia has all of their timeouts left and they are not taking them. So obviously conceding the win a first down, Cook takes it to the 30 yard line and that is all. The Falcons win at home 29 to six. Well, everybody, don't get me wrong here. 
But I don't think this is the Philly team that we were expecting or played here tonight. And the Falcon offense was able to put over 200 more yards on the stat sheet without punching it in the end zone more than twice. The Eagle offense could barely surpass 200 yards for the game. Either Philly was having a really bad night or the Falcons are just that good. I'm hoping for the latter, but I guess the only thing that will give us the answer is what happens in the next few weeks. There are undoubtedly more, but I wanted to comment on three things that I took away from this game. Matt Corral has gone through two games now and has shown a very poised presence in the pocket and hasn't thrown an interception yet. Four touchdown passes and zero picks is a really good way to start the season. As a matter of fact, he's tied at the top of the NFL with Aaron Rodgers for the best touchdown to interception ratio. Both are four to zero after two games. There are two other quarterbacks that haven't thrown a pick this season yet. Care to venture a guess? Let me know who you think the other two are and I'll let you know in the next episode. The second thing that I've noticed is the play of safety Jaquan Brisker. He just seems to be a ball hawk. Two interceptions in as many games is a great start to the season. Are we looking at a candidate for defensive rookie of the year possibly? The third thing is the power and accuracy of of the Falcons' new kicker. Cade York out of LSU is perfect on this young season. Five of five field goals and five of five extra points puts him at the top of the stat sheet for the most attempts made. The only thing that's missing is an attempt of 50 yards or over to bump him into that category. Oh, and there is a fourth thing that I almost forgot. Halfback Jerrion Ely has the best punt return yard average for guys with the most returns at 8 returns and 8.9 yards per punt return. It just looks like Atlanta is doing really well with this season's round of rookies. They'll get another chance to shine this next week when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers invade Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I know that the Bucks are having a real rocky start to this season, but let's hope it's not this game that they turn the ship around. They've lost to both the Cowboys and Seahawks to start things off and have the number 29 power ranking in the NFL. In looking at their roster, it appears that they have some great talent at the top and a very good overall score but not a lot of depth, which could be one of the reasons why they haven't been keeping up with the teams that they've played so far. This should be an interesting rivalry game since the Bucks haven't won a game yet. Wow, (laughs) did did I just say that? Um, Wow, yeah. Sometimes I shouldn't be allowed to speak, I'm sorry. Uh, That's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the MMC Broadcasting Network. One would have expected more of a challenge for the Falcons given last week's Eagles performance. The defense, though, was outstanding tonight. However, they need to put in the same kind of effort come next week because they're playing the GOAT after all. And can the Falcons remain undefeated in week number three? To find out, be with us for an NFC South showdown as the Buccaneers, along with the Pewter Pirates, invade Atlanta. Until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>